Hello and welcome to another Scottish mountain walking guide. In today's video I travel to Loch Lochie to climb Mial Nan Chenga and Strawn Ahoya Gerev. Today's walk is a bit longer than recent walks at 18.9 kilometres with 1275 metres of ascent. It is expected to take around 6 hours and 50 minutes to walk. Once again, and without any snow, navigation is relatively easy with another good and clear path to follow. As always, links to the OS map for the route, the starting point car park and the Scottish Mountain Weather site are included in the description below. There is a small car park at the start of the walk, parking is free and there are no height restrictions and you can probably fit around 10 cars. It's around 3 hours and 15 minutes drive from both Glasgow and Edinburgh and the closest public toilet is in Fort William around 40 minutes drive away. Starting from the car park you continue southwest following along the same road that you use to get to the car park. Immediately you'll cross over a bridge and you follow that road down. It becomes a private road at this point which is why you can't park any further down the road. It's a single track road and this is the only area you can park in. You'll pass a couple of cottages. After about a kilometre you'll come to a junction and at this point you want to go straight on and you can go through a gate or you can actually walk around the side of the post at the end of the gate and continue along this track through the forest. It will start to increase in altitude slightly and you come up to a high point around about here and then it will drop off. It does seem like you're losing quite a lot of altitude but in reality it's only about 30 metres. After 3 kilometres you'll come to a signpost that indicates to take the right turn here to go up to the Monroes. As you turn up this track it goes from being a nice hard gravel track to a muddy path. It's not that bad, it's quite a clear and wide track. It's a mixture of mud and rocks but it's easy enough to walk on. You follow the path up through the woods. It's quite a steep ascent at this point and you just keep following the path. It's a wide and clear track to follow and there's recently been some work to improve the condition of the path. You follow that up, leave the woods but you keep going up. It gets slightly less steep and a little bit easier to walk along but you're still going up and gaining a fair amount of altitude. You keep following that path all the way up to the BLAC. At this point you can choose to go either left or right. For this walk I chose to do Mial Na Chenga first simply because it was further away from the BLAC. So I head directly south, again you're going to increase in altitude quite quickly as you climb up this bit and then it flattens off. And this is the only section right here of the path that is at all peaty or boggy and it's easily avoided if you just can go slightly to your left as you're approaching and a wee bit higher up and you can walk above the boggy section. From there it flattens off a little bit and it gets very steep as you're climbing up this path. But again the path is a good quality, easy to follow and it's, there's not any scree on the path so it's actually easy to walk along. And then you've got a long flat ridge to the very summit at the southern end. From that point you simply retrace your steps back to the BLAC. And at this point as you're descending down here you can very easily make out the zigzag of the path on the opposite side. As you're coming up to the BLAC from the east. It's actually quite difficult to see this. From the descent down here it's very clear and obvious where the path is. So you continue north and join the zigzags as they zigzag up. And you can see that the last zag of the zigzags it gets quite a bit steeper and then after that it goes straight up and this bit is quite a slog. But you'll come up not quite to the BLAC. The BLAC is just a bit lower down here. You'll come up to the left of that. Path is a little bit vague right here but you keep going straight across. And you'll come to the top of this little ridge and then you will see the path it's quite clear again and you turn left and follow that up to the summit of Strawn Ahoya Gerev. For your descent you simply retrace your steps back. The one thing to be careful of and I point this out in the video is that as you're descending down here you don't want to go all the way to the BLAC and if you did if you went to the lowest point and you started to find you were ascending up the other side all you'd have to do is take a right turn 90 degrees to your right and then you would go straight ahead and you would cross back over this path. So you'd be able to cross back onto this path. The path is very clear all the way up. It's only a very short distance of about 50 metres at the top where the path is a bit more vague. So you join back onto that path and then descend to your south. You'll come back to the zigzags, follow the zigzags down, get to the BLAC and then obviously turn north east and follow the path back out. Quite an easy path to descend, it's not too steep, it's good underfoot. And when you come back down through the woods, you'll obviously turn to your left, heading sort of north, northeast, back along the gravel track, and you've got a three kilometre walk back to the car park. Good morning, 
It's 8.30 in the morning. I'm at the car park for the two Monroes at Loch Lochy. Car park looks to fit about four or five cars. And by the look of this tarmac, it looks like it's just been laid. It's still got a line there. This was a construction compound for the new hydro dam they're building here. So I've been leaving this one for the quieter days because I didn't think it'd be easy to get parked. But today it's very easy to park. Weather's going to be horrible. Wet, windy. This is a bit of the least windy spot near Fort William. So from the car park, you head south continuing along the road that you came in to, to park at the car park. It's about three kilometres. Nice level flat walk most of this part until we turn off into the onto the side of the mountain. After three kilometres, there's a clear path that takes you up to the right. And it's an easy one to navigate. Clear path, not much choice. You go right up to the BLAC and then left for one Monroe and right for the other Monroe. So when you see the compound here, this is where you want to keep to the right. Last time I did this walk, this wasn't here obviously, and in the future it will go away. You want to keep to the right, going along the Great Glen Way. A little over three kilometres from the car park, you'll come to the path that goes up on the right. You can see it's clearly signposted. There's also, coincidentally, a blue Great Glen walk signpost at the same spot. Walking through the woodland has been very calm. You're sheltered from the weather. There is a bit of a rise. So you're walking uphill, then you're walking downhill to get to this point, so on the way back. Clearly going back up and then down again. Easy descent from the high point back to the car park. Temperature is around about nine degrees at the moment. We'll see what it's like once we get further up. Once we get out of the woods, we're most likely going to get hit with some strong winds. There is a bit of a storm coming through Britain at the moment. Gale force winds are going to hit the England. And this is kind of at the eye of the storm. So it's a bit of calm as place to go walking. So up to the right. Four kilometers into the walk and you leave the woodland behind. That 1k coming up the hill there was very steep. This path has recently been sort of revigorated. It's been flattened off. Really easy to follow so far. Uh, definitely the calm before the storm just now. Yeah, 
but the summits are in cloud. It's been quite a steep slog getting up to this point. Now we can see ahead just how far it is to the BLAC. It curves round there to the left, but thankfully it's a bit more level at the moment. From that BLAC, we'll turn to the right, do the first summit, then you retrace your steps back down to the BLAC and then go up to the left, do the second one. About two kilometers to the BLAC from here. That's about an hour and 45 minutes since I left the car park. Just below the BLAC there. You probably here the wind is starting to pick up a little bit. So I've stopped and put on a couple more layers and changed the battery. It's getting a little bit brighter and the wind's just calmed down. I'm going to go south, so that's to the left when I get to the BLAC there. Do Mal Mial Nanchenga first. It's the slightly lower of the two tops, but it is a longer walk from the BLAC there. So I'd rather do that one first, and then when I get back, it makes it slightly easier thinking I've got less to walk going to the next top. From the BLAC, there is 300 meters of ascent and one and a half kilometers distance to the summit of Mial Nanchenga. I'm at the BLAC, so to go up to the, the Monroe to the south, you can see the path there, so it curves round to the left. Got a bit of a view straight ahead, so I'm looking west. Really surprised that I've managed to get a view of the summit. I doubt it'll be clear when I get to the top. It's raining, as you can probably tell. Not far to go out. Just make out the summit, very light cloud on it at the moment. Almost there. I'm 
getting near the top, still a little bit to go. It's still clear here. But the other top's in clouds and the cloud is coming in. So I just thought I'd get a view before it completely clouds over. At the top of that steep ascent, the summit is just over there, a couple of hundred metres. It's quite windy at the edge there. Search and rescue helicopter out. So, soon be at the top, might get a very, very slight view. I'm at the summit of Bial Nanjenga. The wind really just picked up sort of the second half of that flat bit just back there. So the weather's been a lot better than the forecast. So far. South, what's the even further south of the summit? It's looking back towards Fort William, roughly. Uh, the wind chill is a little bit cold. I'll get the wind meter out and see how fast the wind is actually going. The wind speed there hit about 16 miles per hour. I have to say it feels a lot more than that. I'm leaving it out just now to see what the temperature drops down to. So behind the cairn we've got about 3 miles an hour roughly. And it's just under 5 degrees at the moment. The Met Office weather says that the winds at summit here should be around 18 miles per hour. So that's not bad. Pretty close to the meter. It's not meant to get any worse on this summit today. I need to go and check the other one. Current wind speed, according to the Met Office on Strawn Ahoya Gerev, is 15 miles per hour, increasing to 19 over the next couple of hours. So much the same as here, as you'd expect. It's not far away. Temperature's down to... Celsius. Okay. The temperature's down to 37 Fahrenheit and 3 degrees Celsius. I tell you, it feels a lot colder than that. So from the summit, just retrace your steps heading north back down to the BLAC and then we'll go up the other side. Once you come to the end of this little flat bit heading north, you want to just make sure you look out for the little cairn on the left and turn to your left and we're going to head a little bit northwest. You'll soon see the path and then you follow that back down. It's just the same way you came up. This is the only bit that's slightly boggy. And it's 
it's not very, it's a very short section and I think if you take the higher path you can actually just avoid it but because the ground is actually frozen today you can just walk over it <laughs> so nice and easy today Just going to go down and up the other side you can see the zigzags they're quite easy and gentle to start with the funny thing that i noticed when i was coming down there is they go like that so far then there's that gray section and the next zigzag is much steeper and then you get to the end of that and you can just make out it's like they just gave up the zigzags we're going straight for the top so down and up the other side That last section coming up the zigzags, the very last bit, and then the sort of straight up to here. Pretty tough, pretty steep. So when you see these two cairns, that's quite a welcome sight. It starts to get a little bit easier. You also want to keep an eye on these cairns when you're coming back down. That's your guide to do a right turn on the descent. But we'll get to that one up there and the path's going to bend to the left. So now we bend to the left. The cairn is a little bit back from the actual path and that's why this is easy to miss on the descent. You're not going right down to the little bee lack ahead there. You're actually going to turn off and head for that cairn. About 100 metres before the lowest point. It is actually just up there, you just sort of see the top in the cloud, so not far now. You can see Loch Ness in the distance over there. There's only a very small cairn here. As you can see, it's quite a grassy top, so there's not much rock to collect from it. Which means it's a bit cold. I won't be staying here very long. Just retrace my steps back down to the little bee lack there, then go down the zigzags back to the big bee lack. And then all the way back out. Easy route to navigate this one. The view to the west is clearing up very slightly. And the rains come on. You can see directly ahead, I'm coming down to that sort of low point in this ridge. And just look across to my right, and there's the cairn. Just a little bit further forward, you can actually see signs of wear. And then there's the second cairn. So I'm going to my right. Straight ahead will take me back to the top of the zigzags. 
follow that down to the BLAC, then turn left. Back down at the Bielach, the wind's calmed down a little bit, still raining. Obviously from here you turn left, heading east, and then it's just right back down to the woods. Back down at the track, just got to turn left, head north along the Great Glen Way and then you'll be back at the car park, just straight on. My phone's complaining about getting too wet, everything is wet, which means the, the audio quality might be poor as well. So, it's not windy, it's just rainy. I'm back at the car park, it's quarter past three, so it's a little under seven hours walking time, including stops. That's not too bad. Looks like that bit of tarmac in front is going to become parking spaces as well. This used to be the original compound for the dam. I guess the initial stages, they've now built a new compound, so they're moving out of here and left behind some nice parking spaces. I hope you enjoyed the video. A bit wet. At least you get to see what it looks like. Uh, thanks for watching and as always look forward to showing you more in the next video. Bye for now.